Miss Boss said ways to save. Where to stay, things to do. We've got you covered with our Waikiki guide. Hi, I'm Jordan. And I'm Erica. And this is the Hawaii Vacation Guide. Forty-two percent of all dollars are spent in Waikiki for the Jose Hawaii for visitors in 1.5 square miles. Waikiki's little nuts. Let's jump into number one. Fun fact, Oahu is the cheapest Hawaiian island to visit and that's thanks to the lodging. As lodging is your biggest expense on a trip, Waikiki and Oahu in general can offer comparatively reasonable accommodations. While Oahu is the cheapest Hawaiian island to visit, it is still not cheap, with an average nightly rate in Waikiki of $269 per night. I am on Waikiki Beach right now, and here you have nightlife, you have the beach, you have luxury hotels, you have food trucks in an alley, you have ABC stores every five feet. Waikiki is right for a lot of different people. From luxury vacationers wanting a five-star experience to those backpackers wanting more of a hostel experience, you can really find it all here in Waikiki. And post-COVID and everything opening up, it is wonderful to see so many Japanese visitors back again visiting. There are tons of Japanese restaurants, things written in Japanese, tour buses that have guides that speak only in Japanese. So there are a lot of services back here for Japanese visitors. Is Waikiki a reflection of greater Oahu? It is not. Waikiki is its own thing. It kind of feels like a Las Vegas of Hawaii because it has tall buildings, lots of restaurants, entertainment, shopping, and it's just a fun vibe. So what is the difference between Oahu, Honolulu, and Waikiki. Oahu is the third largest Hawaiian island. It is located between Kauai and Maui. Honolulu is the city and county on Oahu. The city covers the southeast side of Oahu, and Waikiki is a neighborhood in Honolulu, one of many. It fronts the two mile long Waikiki beach in the front and backs to the Alawai Canal on the Mauka side. Ala Moana Mall is on one side and Diamond Head is on the other. If you are visiting Waikiki or Oahu, you are going to want to check out our Wayfinder itinerary. You guys, this is so good and it will make your planning so easy. We take you on pre-planned excursion days around the island to see the best sites, eat at the best restaurants, make your trip easy. Check out our itinerary, the hawaiianvacationguide.com slash itineraries. Number five is Honolulu Big. It's a cosmopolitan city with a population of 350,000 and a greater urban area of 1 million people. And that's from the 2020 census. Fun fact, it is the largest county in the country as it picks up any island not picked up by the other counties. So Honolulu measures 1,380 miles from end to end. Waikiki is 1.5 square miles, is about one and a half to two miles long and two to three blocks deep. So it makes it very small and cute. It's a nice little neighborhood. That's Kuhio. That's Kalakaua. There are two main roads through Waikiki. They run parallel to each other and parallel to the ocean. You have Kalakaua Avenue and Kuhio Avenue. Kalakaua, which I'm on right now, is the main stretch. You'll find all the big shopping here or all the big resorts because it's on the beach. Kuhio is good for a little cheaper things like a little, little better price place to eat and better price shopping. Kuhio Avenue is named after Prince Kuhio, who is delegate to the U.S. Congress for the territory of Hawaii. He was a true Renaissance man, world traveler, surfer, suffragist, statesman, and Hawaiian. The Hilton Hawaiian Village is on the other side of Waikiki. On the other side, you have the Queen Kapiolani and the Waikiki Marriott on the far other side of it. It takes about 30 minutes to walk from the Hilton Hawaiian Village to the Honolulu Zoo. Just to give you an idea of how big or how long Waikiki is. Waikiki is just built for visitors. It's got hotels and restaurants and shopping. You got iconic diamond head in the background. You got tons of things to do. That is why people stay in Waikiki. It's got a lot to offer. Waikiki translates to spouting water. The area is full of abundant streams and fish ponds and springs and taro patches all around it. The Royal Hawaiians used this area as a playground back in the day, but the Alawai Canal drained all that, so to make room for all these high rises and hotels. 
So for the smallest crowds and the best prices, best time to visit is the shoulder season of April, May, and then in September and October. The peak seasons are June, July, and August. You see the biggest crowds there, so you find the highest prices for hotels, airplane tickets, and for rental cars. What is the weather like in Waikiki? It's gonna be gorgeous here, right? Temperatures are always in the 70s, even during the winter time, it's in the 70s. Sometimes it can hit the high 80s, or sometimes it can hit the low 80s. The ocean is always lovely. You won't find people wearing wetsuits here. Temperatures are around 75, max high 80 during the summer. And rain, you are in the tropics, so you get these nice rains coming off the mountains here. You might get an early morning downpour, but an all day rain and all week rain is very rare. You might find that during the winter. Whoa, we're not going outside. All right, we're at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel and you don't have to stay beachside in Waikiki. So Waikiki is only a few blocks wide. So wherever you are, you're only a short walk to the beach. And even hotels across the street can have an ocean view, which is nice. But if given an option, we really do enjoy the convenience, the sound of the surf and staying on the ocean. Waikiki has its share of luxury hotels. So the ones on the beach are the Halekulani, which has a small beach, the Pink Palace here, the Royal Hawaiian, and the Moana Surfrider. And another one that is off the beach, but about a 10 minute walk, is the Ritz-Carlton Waikiki Residences. Average nightly rate for a luxury hotel in Waikiki is $690, and that is less than the average statewide for luxury hotels, which is $840 a night. All right, so value hotels in Waikiki will run you about $250 to $300 a night. And there are some that are very close to the beach, like the Beachcomber, which is right behind me. You also have the Queen Kapiolani and the Hyatt Regency. And then a little bit further away, you also have the Surf Jack and the Lalo. Hotel or vacation rental when you come to Waikiki? Well, in Waikiki, it is legal to have vacation rentals and there are a lot of them here. They are in high rise condo buildings and they are pretty well priced with the average around $200 per night. But I will say they vary in quality. So make sure you thoroughly read the reviews before you pick one. And if you want help getting started looking for a vacation rental in Waikiki, head to our where to stay section, the hawaiivacationguide.com slash stay because we have some reviewed for you. All right, how do you get around Waikiki? Transportation is really easy in Waikiki. You can get Biki bikes, you can get scooter rentals, you can walk. We love to just walk around the whole neighborhood on it. There's also the bus you can hop on. There's a Waikiki trolley, which made is more like a loop system taking you to tourist attractions around the island. And then of course you have taxis, Ubers, and lifts to use too. It's easy to get around Waikiki. Waikiki has two large parks. First, we're in Fort Derussi right now. This park is right by the Hilton Hawaiian Village. You got pickleball courts here. It has the military museum here. And also it's a beach park, so it's right on the beach with some volleyball courts on it. And this is on the Eva side. And underneath Diamond Head, you have Queen Kapiolani Park, which has the Waikiki Shell, which is a big amphitheater. Then you also have the Honolulu Zoo. You have the Waikiki Aquarium there. And it's the largest park, so you have lots of area to run around. It's a great place to run around when you get that jet lag in the morning. It won't take you long after being like you realize there's an ABC store about every five feet. These are convenience stores. They're located throughout the Hawaiian Islands, but Waikiki has a lot of them. Here you can find everything from beer to snacks to coffee to souvenirs, everything you need. And I gotta admit, I don't mean this in a bad way, they have a certain smell to them. Not a bad thing, but there's no way near an ABC store. They're everywhere. They're ubiquitous to Hawaii and Waikiki. And yeah, I guess it must be when you're in Hawaii. I prefer going to Foodland for it, but you can find it at ABC stores also. All right, myth, Waikiki is dangerous. I've got to say, I've never felt unsafe here. We've been coming for almost 20 years, and while we've seen it get a bit grittier, and it's definitely dealing with its fair share of problems like a lot of other cities, I've never felt unsafe. That said, I also don't go out super late at night, so we have some data for you. So there has been an uptick in theft and disorderly conduct in the last few years, but they launched the Safe and Sound Initiative in 2022. And as a result of this, the program increases felony charges, removes repeat offenders, and cracks down on theft. After one year, they have seen a dramatic decrease in crimes. You will see a lot of police around, and they also have the Waikiki ambassadors who are not police officers, but they serve as an extra set of eyes. And also, they welcome you and help you if you need anything. I'm 
popular opinion, we like Waikiki Beach. Sure, it can be crowded, hard to find a place to sit, but boy, the slow rolling waves make for a great place to go surfing. It's gorgeous, tranquil blue water. And like, you know, all the hotels are here. You got ABC stores, you got live music. You just got five star hotels, you got value hotels. You got a little bit for everyone here. And like, it's a two mile stretch of beach. Waikiki Beach is just really nice. Sure, it's got crowds, but heck, we like it. Waikiki Beach is actually made up of eight beaches. It depends on who you ask. But they start off the Hilton Hawaiian Village with the Kahanamoku Beach and go all the way down past Queen Kapiolani Beach Park. All right, our favorite one, especially for kids, is Kuhio Beach because it has a nice protective wall around it. Also, Kahanamoku Beach and Kahanamoku Lagoon are also good for kids because they're protected by a reef. The beaches on the far ends like Kahanamoku and then Queen Kapiolani are the most quiet beaches because they're the farthest ones out of the way. If you're looking to be seen, Waikiki Beach right in front of the Duke statue is the busiest, but that is where all the action is, is happening. And if you want to rub elbows with locals, you actually have to leave Waikiki to Ala Moana Beach Park, which is just on the other side of Ala Canal on the Eva side. Myth. Jellyfish things are more prevalent in Waikiki and there's things more correlated with the lunar cycle. Crazy, right? This one is actually true. A UH Manoa study researched this to find out the reason why. And what they found was that jellyfish come into shore on Waikiki Beach eight to 10 days after a full moon and they come in to spawn. Specifically, this jellyfish right down here. Since the 1980s, the number of stings have exploded. The reason why is because they found artificial reefs have been put in offshore Waikiki Beach. This has created more food for the jellyfish, causing a jellyfish explosion of population. So check the lunar calendar down below from the Waikiki Aquarium. If you do get stung, please do not use human urine. Use vinegar, remove the tentacles, and use warm water, and look for lifeguard flags all across Waikiki Beach. Myth, Waikiki Beach sand is fake. This one is false, but they have imported sand over the years, right? So originally, there was a continuous stretch of Waikiki Beach. It was two miles long, unbroken. But now, since the 1950s, it has become broken. And that's because they put beach bungalows in, and jetties, and seawalls, and that caused a lot of erosion to take place. The story is they've imported sand from as far away as Manhattan Beach in the 1920s and 30s. Then in the 50s, they started importing it maybe from the other side of the island, or even the 80s. Now, today, they're smarter and they import the sand from offshore Waikiki because it's more natural sand and they bring it on shore. So they do have to dredge and then fill the beach to keep this beautiful sand that you see today. But this was an original beach. Duke Kahanamoku, he became a five-time Olympian, five-time Olympic medalist, father of modern surfing, sheriff of Honolulu from 1932 to 1961, Hollywood actor. He rescued eight fishermen from their capsized boat in heavy surf. He's also a businessman and Duncan vs. Kahanamoku, Duke was a pro forma defendant in a landmark Supreme Court case. He's the first person to be inducted into the, both the Swimming Hall of Fame and the Surfing Hall of Fame. As Duke would say, the best surfer out there is the one having the most fun. And the thing I love about Waikiki the most is iconic Diamond Head, or Leahi. So, it's called Diamond Head because sailors way back in the day mistakenly thought calcite crystals were diamonds sparkling on the side of the volcanic crater. Today is a great place to go hiking. Start your trip doing a nice hike up top, reservations are required, and in our Oahu Wayfinder itinerary, we have a jet lag day that starts off hiking Diamond Head and it takes you all around Waikiki. So we absolutely love that itinerary. Everybody loves it, including me, because I'm biased. There are so many things to do in Waikiki, and a lot of them are free or not very expensive. So Waikiki is famous for surfing. There are numerous breaks offshore Waikiki, and you can take surf lessons or rent a board on the beach. We have a link below to surf lessons that we've taken and really enjoyed. Head to the Honolulu Zoo, the Waikiki Aquarium, or do beach activities like a canoe ride. You can also make reservations, hike Diamond Head, don't forget, on Friday, there's fireworks at the Hilton Hawaiian Village. They start at 745 sharp. You do not want to be late. And if you are searching for more things to do in Waikiki and around Oahu, grab our Oahu itinerary for more. And I think you'll love it. Yeah! That's so good! Woo! Should you head to a luau? A luau is not required when you visit Hawaii but you will find a lot of options in and near Waikiki. One good price option is Queen's Waikiki Luau at the International Marketplace Mall. It is a mall, but authentic Polynesian dancing, and you'll enjoy this at a 
pretty good price comparatively. You can also hop on a shuttle and head to the Polynesian Cultural Center, which is a 75 minute drive away. And we have even more luau's, so make sure you see our favorite luau's in the link in the description down below. Let's talk free shows. We're at the Royal Hawaiian Center right now. I got the stage behind me. They have free shows on Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Then Ala Moana Center has free hula shows at 5 p.m. And then International Marketplace has free shows on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. They feature stories and hula at 6.30. And so like you said, you can go to a luau, but there's a lot of great free shows around Waikiki. And yes, there is snorkeling near Waikiki. So our favorite spot, if you're going from the shore, is just across from Queen Kapiolani Beach Park. Um, there's great snorkeling out there. And then you can also do a tour. So right now we are on a boat that also goes to Turtle Canyon, which is a very popular snorkeling spot right off of Waikiki. We have an article with our favorite Turtle Canyon snorkeling tours. So make sure you check that one out. Let's talk boat tours. There's a lot of them that leave very close to Waikiki, just 15 minutes away at Cavallo Basin, where we are right now. Here you can do sunset boat tours, whale watching tours, which we just got off of, snorkeling tours. All these great Turtle Canyon tours leave from here, or at least most of them do. All right, besides the free hula shows, which we've already mentioned, you can also head out outrigger canoeing from Waikiki Beach. You can also just head into Honolulu and go to Iolani Palace or the Bishop Museum, or go on a Hawaiian sailing canoe from Kiwalo Basin. This last one, it's our favorite cultural activity on Oahu, and we dare say it's actually better than a luau. And fire. Oh, I got it. <laughs> Parking in Waikiki is tough. So there is very limited free parking and overnight street parking. You can find some along the Alawai Boulevard or in Queen Kapiolani Regional Park, but we do not recommend hunting for free parking. It's hard to get and will be a walk to your hotel. Hotels also charge a ton of money for parking. It can be 30 to $50 a night and vacation rentals may charge as well. But good news, you don't need a car if you're staying in Waikiki. Just rent a car for the day if you need it, if you wanna go out exploring, or hop on a Circle Island tour. We have links to some of our favorite Circle Island tours in the description below. So much shopping in Waikiki. You have three main shopping centers, tour directly in Waikiki. One is the Royal Hawaiian Center, right off Kalakaua Avenue, and they have the International Marketplace, which is between Kalakaua Avenue and Pukio Avenue. Both of them had tons of shopping, a lot of luxury shopping, but also too, just like local stores, kind of higher end local stores, and like everything you need here, it's really nice. And the third one is the Ala Moana Center, which is the largest open air mall in the country. It has a lot of high end goods, brings a lot of people, especially from Asia over here for some shopping. Also too, you have Kalakaua Avenue, which a lot of luxury stores on, like at Jimmy Choo's and Louis Vuitton and all and Gucci and all those stores. And then you have Kukuyo Avenue, which usually you can find some like better priced stores, and things like that. But you can find art galleries here, clothing stores, souvenir stores. You can buy pretty much anything you want in Waikiki. Right now, I'm at the International Marketplace, which is a great place for restaurants. They even have a luau here and lots of shopping. All right, let's talk place to eat in Waikiki. Sure, you can go to Starbucks, you can go to Denny's, you can go to Cheesecake Factory. That's fine, you can do that. But try to push your taste buds. There's a lot of great Japanese restaurants, a lot of sushi restaurants, udon. There's, of course, Roy's. There's a lot of great restaurants. Check out Waikiki. Right now, we're at House Without a Key. We've got great views at Diamond Head. They have a hula show on most nights. Check out our itinerary and our quick hit section. We share all of our favorite restaurants around Waikiki and the entire island. For more things to do around Waikiki and perfectly planned out days and all of Oahu, check out our Oahu Wayfinder itinerary. People absolutely love them because they've taken them out perfectly planned out excursion days. Quick hit section has all of our favorite restaurants in there. You can't go wrong with them. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you.